The world of Final Fantasy has much to offer. Whether you are a social player, a hardcore raider, or simply a player that enjoys an amazing story, this world has something for everyone, including the ever-improving and expanding PvP community. I come before you now because we, the PvP community, wish to welcome each and every one of you. The life of the PvP player starts at the very beginning. This is a sprout, a reservoir of raw, untapped potential. Their brains are yet to be corrupted by the temptation that lurks within Nimza. Instead, you sprouts can become the tiny terrors of PvP, or soup. I'm telling you, the Namazus make a mean sprout soup. Before you can dive into the chaotic battlegrounds of PvP, you must firstly reach level 30 in any one job, and acquire your first job crystal. From there, head on over to your grand company. There, you will obtain the quests needed for both frontline and crystalline conflict. The quests you are looking for are, like civilized men and women, and a pup no longer. Both NPCs can be located both inside and outside of your grand company. There is also the game mode known as Rival Wings, but for that, you need to head on down to the Wolf's Den. Here you shall find your final quest unlocks, amongst stalls trading a vast assortment of gear and items for currencies earned through playing PvP. This ranges from amazing glamours, to useful items such as ventures, minions and mounts. It is here where you shall prepare before diving into your first round of PvP. As a new player, this is of the utmost importance. Going in unprepared can lead to a bad first impression, and there is only one way in which I can sum up the PvP experience. And we're about to embark on a potentially dangerous mission. There could be physical violence. There could be gunplay. And there's the slightest chance that somebody might even get killed. As a beginner, the battlefield can be a harsh and unforgiving environment, although there is one far greater challenge that newbies struggle to overcome, a true horror that dives deep into the psyche, inflicting turmoil like no other, is the all-powerful training dummy, 100% real mahogany, stainless steel gilded joints, a matte varnish, rebar frames, high-quality white paint detailing, buffed to a peak shine. You might think I am mad, however from years of experience, I have encountered many players out there who spend 20 minutes running around lost and confused, and their end scores reflect just that. These are the same players who end up having a bad experience, never to return. Do yourself the favor, and spend 5 to 10 minutes going over your abilities, and not just with the striking dummies. The player base is genuinely happy to help. You can always ask those you meet at the pier to duel. Dueling is by far one of the best preparations you can do for PvP. You will learn to fight under pressure, discovering the ins and outs of your selected role. This will also teach you which roles your class fares well against, and will help you decide whether or not your starting class is the one you will wish to stick with in PvP. Every player should have at least one job in which they main, and with such a vast collection to choose from, you are not short on options. With your fear of the training dummy now conquered, and a brief understanding of a select job, next I recommend that you fix up your HUD layout. This will take you no longer than 5 minutes, and can vastly improve your PvP experience. What would PvP be without those extra incentives? You can also obtain many amazing rewards with each PvP season, and through means of your achievements. To date, there are currently 4 color variants of the ADS mounts. For those of you out there who enjoy something a little less common, you can obtain free unique Grand Company mounts, earned simply from winning matches. Earn enough wolf marks to pick up your very own Magitek Sky Armor. Not your style? Then perhaps the construct mount earned through Ansel Hakir 
is more your taste. Looking to really stand out? Then perhaps you might want to test your measure in Crystalline Conflict, earning yourself the wonderful Gloria class airship after 200 wins. Each PvP season also comes with rewards only available for that season, such as this traveling supporter, or this mighty red dragon, whose name I shall not even attempt to pronounce. In game, we also have the Garrow's Event, in which you can earn three unique mounts, the Golden Goten for 30 Crystalline Conflict wins, the Silver Ginga, earned with 10 wins of Frontline or Rival Wings, and the Black Stallion Ryago, earned with 60 wins through any PvP mode. These seasons also provide some of the most outstanding armor sets that you can get your hands on, such as the Fox Monarchy, the Fierce Tyrant's Attire, and the Archfiend's Attire. Rewards such as these are only obtainable through their collective season. Once the season ends, they are gone for good. However, one set you can all earn is the Field Commander's Attire, earned through 100 glorious victories on the Seal Rock. And on the topic of Commanders, many of you newer players will start encountering them inside of PvP. But what exactly is a commander? Luckily for all of you, I have located one such specimen. Say hello to Ava. Hello, my name is Ava Ethro. One of the few Dark Knight commanders in PvZ Frontlines by Dark Knight Commander. I, well, I'm someone who tries their best to lead their alliance through a great victory. Here are a few things I will discuss in this video. I will try to keep it short and simple with both topics of each individual category. Being a Dark Knight and being a commander is no easy task, especially in PvV, because they are the main target by enemies in the game. By being a commander for a couple months, and I'm nowhere near as perfect as others who have done it for so long, but I try my best. There are a couple of things, pros and cons to being a commander, but it's all about having fun. There are followings of being a commander. During the beginning of your PvP game, the commander would always mark themselves with the following. Triangle, square, circle, and a plus sign. What I highly recommend not using the circle for it is seems to mark the enemy. Commanders in PvP will, will have my growth, which will be shown below of the list for callouts. These callouts are these are helpful for fighting and survival to win the game. Bow high or PH for sword is a must. Considering you will have to higher ground in PvP, that's why Dark Knight's commanders will try to get their alliance the most kills so they can win. There are times that dangerous situations where you guys have to back up your Dark Knight commander. When there is danger, you gotta have to force your way out of these situations quickly. As a commander, you have to have victories and, and or disease, but that's alright. What is not alright is people in alliance that ruin the move, which happens a lot. You can have summer moves, you know, south marks, gain city, and too many people doing calls when it should be only be just one person. All you can do is ignore and black with them. Ava was also kind enough to create a Google document with further details, which includes a rundown on how you yourself could take up the commanding role. The most fun and best way to learn PvP is through the Frontline game mode, which to date has four maps, with three currently in rotation. The greatest Frontline mode, of course, is none other than Answer Care. First to 1400, teams battle it out to capture objectives, and unlike Seal Rock, these objectives can only be claimed by one team. Careful of center point, as there are those always ready, hungry, for the kill. Onsel Hakir is a well-balanced map, which is almost never short on action. Get together in a light party, then you and your friends can have one hell of a time. The map provides the opportunity to get those satisfying big kills and high damage games. Onto the Fields of Glory, a game mode which in recent months saw a rework overhaul, and can be rather hit or miss. On one side, you get those who only go for the objective, obsessed with only one thing, to lick the ice. Most of these players only show up for their free daily XP boost. But on the other hand, this map has single-handedly become the greatest for those large-scale battles. Oh, they don't know. They don't know. They might know, they might know. Nope, they didn't know. That is beautiful. 
One knockout door. Oh, I got one as well. I see a giant chunky squirrel in a top hat. Three something together. Spin, spin, spin. Oh, she's oh, well holy holy shit. Shit. <laughs> the the Yeah. Shit. Yeah. You can You got stunned and there's a perfect limit break. I died for it, but that was worth. Oh, do we do it too? Yes, we do it too. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine wasn't even needed, holy shit. <laughs> Next, we have the Seal Rock. First to 700, teams must battle for control over elegant homoliths. What makes this mode different to Ansel Hacker is the fact that each team can recapture the objective over the others, until all of the points have been claimed. Being first to 700, many players struggle to find balance in fighting for battle highs and fighting for objectives, resulting in a rather fast-paced game mode. And not to worry, you will find more than enough action as this map sees 2v1s more often than any other game mode. There is also the frontline mode known as Borderland Ruins, which is currently out of rotation due to reworks, and will likely make its return in patch 7.1. This game mode was famous for its center point, in which teams must climb to the top at set time durations throughout the entire match. This resulted in many being thrown from the high grounds, in a beautiful spectacle that would enrage many players. I won't lie, frontline at times can be infuriating, leaving you with that sinking feeling. It often depends on the attitude of others. Sometimes you are left terrified and alone, trapped within a void. There are even those who demand players play the match their way, even when they are wrong. Oh, thanks anyway, but I'm really pretty happy where I am. You will find mindless players who are unable to function without the laser point effect of way markers. There is never time for rest, as at any moment a back sniffer could appear from the shadows. and even those damn moogles wreak havoc in PvP. This chaotic nature is simply part of the charm that is Frontline, and I have gathered a few PvP regulars that would like to give some advice for you newer players. Advice from Atlas. If you are playing on PC, it is way easier to target enemies if you disable friendly names apart from your party, especially helpful for Dark Knights. From Shaltir Bloodfallen, newcomers to Frontline or PvP in general, it would be for them to familiarize themselves with a job or jobs they want to play in PvP. At best, read up on what your skills are doing, because some of them work differently in PvP, and go into the Wolf Den Pier to a striking dummy to test things out for yourself. Formulate a plan in your own head on how you can potentially play the job you choose. Once that's done, hit up Frontline or any other PvP mode you wish to play and just do what you thought of. Also look at what other people are doing, and try to copy that. If results are showing, that means it really worked out for them. In short, familiarize yourself with your job on a striking dummy. Play how you want to play, but try to learn what other people are doing inside of PvP at the same time.
And when I first started out with the front lines, I found it quite overwhelming and it was easy to feel that my contribution didn't matter. What helped me was trying to locate some experienced players in the games and people with a uh, high uh, battle high or it was like someone uh, just uh, taking the lead there. And then I would just try and follow them. And because not only did I uh, support them in the matches, but also learn from them how the flow of the battles would go and uh, thus uh, gaining a better understanding of uh, front lines. Uh, so in team fights, uh, keep in mind that every bit of uh, DPS uh, counts and they can often uh, boil down to uh, who got the highest numbers. Working together is uh, key, so don't be afraid to follow others into glory. My fellow Erosians, you gathered here today to learn what it truly means to be a PvPer. What I'm about to say may sound incredible, but nevertheless it's true. You do not stand alone in this fight. One man does not make an army. You are here to represent your grand company, and you must not let them down. For it is not enough to succeed. Others must fail. On that note, you do not simply gain points from licking crystals, but conquering your enemies. If not the greatest enemy, Twin Adders. Unless you're on them, then fuck the Immortal Flames, because let's face it, red team, best team. This may sound cruel to some even barbaric, but the harsh truth cannot be denied. They do in fact have lunch money, and you can take this. You're not fighting for yourself, but the potential McDonald's after this battle. Now think to yourself, do you want to leave hungry? Or as a 20-piece Nuggy legend, thank you for your time. It has been one amazing year for PvP, and with 7.1 looming, it is about to get even better. This video goes live around the time I reach 3,000 subscribers, which was not possible without each and every one of you. Thank you everyone over at EU Frontline for your help on this video, and for all the fun PvP games we have over here on Light. There will be much more PvP content to come. Myself and Bunny are also planning to branch out into some variety content. Thank you all for the continued support. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I shall see you all in the next one.